I wonder, you know, one of the questions that I, I meant to ask you earlier is, um, there is a sense, though, that, that that kind of information crimes are somewhat uh, uh, victimless. But as a journalist, I know for a fact that the, the demise of the newspaper business is in part to the fact that the information that they put out get, gets disseminated in a thousand different ways and you don't have to pay for the newspaper. So I wonder, uh, I don't even know what the question is. I think I just wanted to say that. Um, <laughs> I just want to get that off my chest. <laughs> Uh, no, but 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 it's true, and also just in, you know digitizing things, paying for the servers to keep them up, and the systems to access them. It yeah. does cost money. Yeah. So it's not like those things happen that they're completely free. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, is there a happy medium there? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I actually think Aaron is a moderate individual in yeah. this. You know, there's often that phrase, "information wants to be free," right? Right. I, I don't think this is something that Aaron thought. Uh, I mean, that's my opinion. Um, if you look at his actions, he's looking at things that are very targeted and very specific and also, I think, very moderate. Like, he's looking at PACER, right? These are government documents right. created by government employees with taxpayer money. They're, uh, they're documents we should be able to look at because we should have transparency in our court system to know how our courts are operating, what kind of laws they're sure. prosecuting. And they're behind a paywall. And they make way more money than they need to digitize those things in order to keep that service. And it's a terrible service. Um, and so uh, liberating those documents, I think, is a very specific uh, comment on the freedom of information and what kind of information should be free. Do you think that people have taken him as a symbol and taken the message too far then? I don't think so. Because, I mean, because the freedom of, it's interesting yeah. when you say f information should be free. The truth of the matter is it ends up having an, uh, the ironically opposite effect when it comes to newspapers because once first source journalism disappears, yeah. then you're really in trouble. And that's yeah. what we're headed towards. Yeah, no, I, I, ag I agree with that. Um, but what I'm saying, he, he would not agree with that that um, information wants to be free. But I'm asking you, do you think that people have taken him, his banner and kind of muddied his message a little bit? I don't, I don't know. I mean, people are certainly way more extreme than he is, and yeah. there's a, certainly a movement. And, and I, know what you're, I know what you mean. I mean, there's, you know, as, as, these medium, as this medium changes, I mean, newspapers made a lot of money from advertising and from, uh, from, that, and from subscription models, uh, obviously. Um, but newspaper as a medium is never, is never going to come back. Right. So, I mean, we're in a situation now where we have to figure out how to, how to fund this stuff. Um, how, how we and, and that goes for everything. It goes for all of art yeah. and expression and journal and absolutely journalism, investigative journalism, and movies and documentaries and everything. Oh, you were saying so it we're, is a bit of the wild west, and it's it interesting is, yeah. that there's people in the middle like him who are trying to make sure that when it gets settled, it's settled in a way that's fair and just. I think that's true. Even the the notion of Creative Commons. Right, Creative yeah. Commons is an imperfect situation, yeah. but you're also choosing what kind of freedoms you want information to have. Right, for instance, this film. This film is um, it's shareable. Uh, we sort of fought to have that be the case. We didn't want to be prosecuting somebody, a, a future Aaron, for sharing this film. So if I buy it legitimately, then I can share it with people, then or you can share it. But you're so we're, we're, you're choosing different things. So you're choosing, um, you know, you share alike. So if you share it, it has to have the same permissions, Creative Commons permissions that I have. Hmm. Uh, it has to, we're doing it with attribution, right? So if you share it, then you have to attribute the, the original artists, the original creators. Um, one thing that we've restricted is, is commercial. So you can't make money off of it. And if that, if that uh, is the case, then that opens up the, the sort, of legal, uh, uh, sort of legal options. Have people been doing that? Wildly. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, just wildly. And for a filmmaker wa who wants to have the film to be seen, yeah. that must feel good. It feels good. You know, I think there's, I, I maybe a little more, you know, I, I would maybe encourage documentary filmmakers after, you know, a year or two years to consider putting their works into the public domain, or at least as a part, maybe a part of that windowing system where they're making money on the film, but then... 
you know, two or three, we, we all make films that we want people to see and that we want to be in the public domain, ultimately. Right. And if you imagine the future with the, the what kind of textbook we're going to have in the future, what students are going to be using, they're going to be linking to things that are freely available. You want your work to be a part of, you, you know, presumably we're capturing this moment and we're trying to understand what this moment's about. And in the future, you want to be able to link to that. So I think that I, we went day and date with that. That, that's radical. Yeah. That's completely radical. It makes sense for this film. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it makes sense for all films. But I would say that after maybe two years in that windowing process, um, maybe, it goes, maybe it goes into that public. That's domain. a neat idea.